Good morning. How are you feeling? Good. Really good. Oh, good. Really good. Huh. Well, good morning. If you don't know me, uh, my name is Reverend Elisha Christopher. I am the spiritual director and senior minister here at the Center for Spiritual Living. Uh, I do use they and them pronouns, and my ancestors come from all over the world, uh, but they immigrated to this country from Austria and Sky uh, Scotland on my father's side, and Austria and Holland on my mother's side. Um, and I wasn't here with you last week because my family was celebrating my mom's dad, my, my maternal grandfather's 95th birthday. Um, so that was quite a joy. Um, and then the week before that, I wasn't here with you because Reverend Sunshine Michelle was here from the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living, and I was at the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living. So we switched. Um, and I had a great time in Oakland. It looked like y'all had a great time here with Sunshine. Um, and I'm really grateful that we've been able to do that. And I've been talking to some of the other ministers in our local CSL kind of region uh, to do that more. Um, because one of the things that I want to remind all of us of is that we're not just this group of people here in this room, right? That as part of Centers for Spiritual Living, we are part of a global movement, right? We have 400 centers in the United States, right? And the thing that I've been thinking about recently is that almost all of our centers on the West Coast have our services at 1030, Right? And almost all of us are using the global themes, so we're exploring the same concepts and the same ideas. Right? And remember that any time a group of people focuses on the same thing at the same time, the power of intention multiplies. So let's just be in this awareness right now that we are in a yeah. stew of collective consciousness, right? Of groups and individuals who are coming together right now, having the same conversation that we're having, lifting the same energy and vibration that we are having. And I had this vision the other day that on Sunday morning, there's like a wave of consciousness that moves across the nation, yeah. right? As our centers start to meet in the, on the East Coast and then over and over and over all the way to Hawaii and around the world. Right? So let's just be in that wave of collective consciousness. Thanks, Beth. Yeah, let's, yeah. Uh, so let's begin with a few breaths. Exhale it all out first. Exhale. And take a deep breath in. And let it go. Take another deep breath in. This time, let it out with a sigh. <sighs> One more deep breath and really let it out. <sighs> and again, the reason that I remind us every week when we come together to begin with breath is to remind us that there's something greater than we are that is breathing all of us. That when we breathe together, even just for a moment, it can remind us of that something more that's breathing through all of us. So this month, the theme we're playing with is unstatus quo, which I think is like my topic. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, because what's the status quo, right? The status quo is the, the normal, right? Ooh, that's a bad word in my, uh, in my vocabulary. Uh, but right, it's, it's that which we perceive to be normal. It's that which has just been, that continues to be, right? It's the story that surrounds us. It's... It's, it's, the, it's the collective conscious agreements, maybe even collective unconscious agreements, that we have all made, that have been made on our behalf for generations, right, that are building the world around us. And so the status quo is, in a sense, it's the collective agreement about what's normal. Well. <laughs> our topic this month is the unstatus quo. Right? That there's a new collective agreement. There's, some, there's a new story that is emerging. And I don't know if you've noticed, but if you look out at the world, and if you look at your life, if you look at our nation, if you look at the politics, if you look at the environment, if you look at, I don't know, anything, it seems like the status quo has been disrupted a little bit. Right? That what is normal, what's acceptable, what has been the story up until now seems to be in a bit of a wobble. And it's up to us to decide what the new status quo will be. 
right? And if we've been looking around and experiencing the world and all of the things that have not been working for many of us for a long time, and we've just accepted them as being okay, we actually end up perpetuating the status quo as it was, right? As a queer person, I will tell you how many times in my life I have perpetuated the status quo of heteronormativity and implanted that internalized homophobia on myself. How often are women reinforcing the patriarchy, right? How often, oh, we could go down the line, we could just keep doing that, right? Because the status quo is the collective agreements that we've all bought into. Whether they serve us or not, we are often the perpetuators of the story. What many of us don't realize is that we are also the authors, the changers, and the editors of the story. And so we can either perpetuate what was, or we can be the place where a new story, where new thoughts, where new ideas, where new ways of doing and being are emerging. And that can be fun. It can be easy. It can be difficult. It can be really irritating. Right? Because when we have purposefully or, or unconsciously been indoctrinated by the ideas that have socialized us, we're often unaware of the stories that we're telling. And we're often unaware of how those stories are perpetuating our negative self-talk. They're perpetuating our illness. They're perpetuating our suffering. And by say our, I mean each one of us individually, and I mean all of us collectively. Right? And so one of the things that I love about this moment in history in which we are living is that the status quo is up for reinterpretation, right? And that's part of the discomfort and the, 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 the weirdness that we're experiencing in the world is because we're in a rewrite. We are all in a great big play that's happening on planet Earth, and in the middle of the play, we are rewriting the script, right? And we can't just pause and rewrite all the rules and then keep going. We've got to not just build this plane as we're flying it, we have to take it apart and build it in mid-flight. <laughs> right? Which is kind of what it feels like. That's why the world feels so uncomfortable right now. Right? We're in both an age of dismantling, but also in a time of rebuilding. Which means that we have to choose where we want to consciously participate in rewriting a new script for ourselves, for each other, for our society, and for the world, right? So here's one itty bitty teensy tiny little example. I have told many of this community over and over and over again, regularly, I am someone who does not identify in the gender binary, right? I am gender fabulous. And so I prefer to use the pronouns they and them rather than he or she to describe myself. So in that, I have given all of you an invitation to be conscious about the words you are choosing. Are you operating in the status quo, the old script that is implanted in your mind that is automatic, that says when you refer to me, he said this? Yeah. Or are you participating in an active rewriting of our conscious awareness of how we see each other that says he, I mean they. <laughs> because in that moment you've caught yourself, you've stopped, you've redirected, and you've participated in building a new story. So whether you know it or not, I've given you all a little consciousness test and I'm judging everyone. <laughs> because, <laughs> right? Because there's an opportunity here for me to be giving an opportunity back to say, here's a conscious practice of how to be intentional with your words, how to not automatically identify someone based on their body, but respect and honor the being through which is being expressed through that body. And so if we operate on the status quo and we just keep perpetuating an old script, then we're going to keep perpetuating the world as it has been. If we choose to participate in the conscious rearranging of our language, that's how we write the new script. That's how we start telling a new story. 
right? How many people in here have, have experienced such a radical transformation in your life at some point or know someone who has where they changed their name? Right? I was born Christopher. I go by Elisha. Right? Because for me, that was part of changing my own script, of recognizing that there's a more of me, there's an evolution of me, there's something else that's emerging, and I want you to reflect that back to me, so call me by my new name. Use my appropriate pronoun. Right? But that's true for each and every one of us. That however that rewrite of the script is, whether you look at yourself in the mirror and do not and tell yourself that you're ugly or you're fat or you're this or you're that, you can instead look at yourself and tell yourself how beautiful, how magnificent, what an expression of the divine you are. Flip the script. Whatever that old indoctrinated script that's alive in your mind, flip it, change it, edit it in the process, in real time, right now. Because as I rewrite the script for myself, as you rewrite the script for yourself, as we rewrite the script of this community, we're building a new story, we're activating a new consciousness, we're waking into the next, the more of us. Right, and so at this center, right, Many of us introduce our pronouns and our ancestors. We have a land acknowledgement. We read a diversity statement. We have all these affirmations that we do for our country. All of these things are here to support each one of us in bringing these things into our conscious awareness that may not have been there before. The status quo was to not pay attention. The new story is to pay attention, to be on purpose, to acknowledge, to recognize, to see the inherent spiritual magnificence in each other and really choose to see it, to affirm it, to reflect it back to each other. Because we are in a time of recreation. We are recreating the world in real time, right now. And so notice in your own life, in your own practice, where are the places that you notice yourself perpetuating old stories? And then where are the places you can begin to tell those new stories, to awaken and activate those new thoughts? We call this philosophy new thought, this movement that we are part of, which means we should be really excited and participatory when the new thoughts are emerging, rather than go, well, that's not how I did it before. That's not what my English class te teacher told me. Right? There's a new way. We're rewriting. So take a breath. And just think about how you, what that script is in your mind. Whether it's the perpetuation of the story of the separation of the the, the world as we see it? Are you perpetuating the separation? Or are you perpetuating the oneness? Are you one who is continuing to tell the old story about yourself, about your life, about the world? Or are you one who is actively participating in creating and building the new story? Take a deep breath in. And again, remember that you are being breathed. Lauren, let's take this a little deeper. And so as we breathe into this moment, I want to invite all of the practitioners and ministers who are here in this space to stand and just hold this consciousness with me. Because I want to remind us that as we breathe to connect with that source presence, that one life, that one infinite being that is living and breathing in everyone and everything. That indeed there is one life that is unfolding through every mind, in every interaction, in every person. That there is no one who is separate from this. And so let us remember right here and right now that each one of us are unique individualized ways that the story is changing. 
that each one of us is a living opportunity for the new way of being to emerge. And it happens through our choices. It happens through our words. It happens through our intentions and our actions and our participation in life. So let us remember that today is a day for each one of us to step into a new story, to activate the new script, to bring more awareness into the words we speak, into the things we are giving it our attention to, into that we are, which we are participating with. So let's take another deep breath in. And remember that every breath is an opportunity for newness. That as we exhale, we can release all those old patterns. As we exhale, we can let go of all those old beliefs. As we exhale, we can release all that no longer serves. We can empty ourselves so that when we breathe in again, the newness, the freshness, the return of something more emerges in us again. Every breath. Every day, every moment is an opportunity to start over. So let's begin anew right now. So take another deep breath in. And let it go. Another deep breath. And let it go. One more deep breath in. And let go. And so in gratitude, I just bless these words, knowing that they land in our hearts and become our actions. And so it is. So take another deep breath in. <sighs> so before the band comes up, um, on the first Sunday of the month, we tend to do a little extra prayer, and I wasn't here last month. And we will want to take a little bit of time just to bring our collective consciousness together for healing. Um, and we often, you know, we've, we shift up how we do this every time, but part of the purpose of this is to remember that our collective consciousness has power. That this new thought philosophy was based on the power of mental healing. And that I believe that something emerges when we come together, when we focus on the same thing at the same time. That that collective energy has potency. Right? So I want to do first a prayer for healing this morning. Um, and I want to do that in a couple different ways. One, uh, Michael Santa Cruz. I told, we texted about this, so I'm going to invite you up. <laughs> um, Michael, I believe you're going in for a procedure in a few days. Um, next Friday, next Friday uh, to have some cancer removed from your body. Um, and I want us to bless this person, this being's body, their wholeness. Um, and I also want to invite anyone else in this room who has cancer in your body who would like to receive this healing as well to come up and stand here with Michael. And Michael, if you would come stand right down here. And I'm going to invite anyone else who wants to receive this prayer as well. Marilyn's coming on up. And I'm going to invite everybody else to stand up. And first, just take a moment, rub your hands together. Can I invite Cheryl and Topher and Tamara to come surround these two up here? Just hold these ones. And extend your hands out towards these two beloveds. And I'm going to invite all of us to use the power of our voices to pour energy into these two, to speak prayers for healing, for wholeness, for the revealing of health and wellness and vitality, and imagining them in their absolute wholeness for Marilyn and for Michael. So everybody take a deep breath in and let go. Take a deep breath, let go, take a deep breath in, and I'm going to invite everyone to use the power of your word, whether it's to speak or sing a mantra or make a sound, and let's pour prayer over these beloveds right now. Here we go. So in this moment, I speak a word of awareness, remembering that there is one life that there is one power, that there is one presence that holds all of the patterns of absolute perfection in this great and glorious universe. 
that in the divine mind, these patterns and blueprints for perfection make themselves manifest as the glorious, beautiful existence that is here. So those perfect patterns hold every galaxy in perfect order. They allow every flower and tree to blossom and bloom in their perfect nature. And those perfect patterns live and breathe in the cells and in the DNA and in the very tissues of, our of the very being of our existence. And so as I hold this awareness right now as the very truth of who in each one of us is, I speak a word specifically for, for uh, Michael Santa Cruz and for Marilyn. They're right here and right now. These bodies that stand before us are bodies of absolute perfection, that we speak over them this vibration of wholeness and truth, remembering right here and right now that in the presence of truth, nothing else can stand. And so I hold this truth, I hold this awareness that wholeness washes over them right now, that every cell, every tissue, every facet, every function of the body, of, this ge of the genes, of every bit element of the, of the immune system, that all of it is operating in this state of divine perfection. And that if the body can create, the body can uncreate. And so anything that is unlike health and wellness in these bodies, in each of our bodies, in all of our bodies, may it vanish from the nothingness from which it came, returning to the void so that what emerges right here in the light that we are shining into our awareness is an awareness of absolute wholeness, absolute health, absolute perfection and vitality in every cell of every body, not just these two, not those of us in this room, but all of us for health and wellness and vitality of our planet. Let us remember that our health is intricately and intimately interwoven with the health of the ecosystem and the biosphere. So let this be a prayer for the healing of the world right here and right now. And let that healing manifest in the bodies of these beloveds. And may that truth land in each one of our bodies right here and right now. So let's all take a deep breath in. Deep breath in, deep breath in. And I want us all to reach our arms up into the sky. Reach your arms up and imagine that there are divine patterns of wholeness and perfection in the mind of the universe for each one of our bodies, for the planet, for this life, for those who are standing here before us. Reach up, imagine you could grab those patterns from the universal consciousness and pull them down into this room. Imagine that health and vitality washing over your body. Imagine that sense of health and wellness washing down over us. Pull those patterns down into the body. Feel it, pulling it down into this space, washing over these two, washing over each one of us, reminding and remembering that our absolute truth is wholeness, health, and perfection that the one life is expressing right here, right now, in absolute wholeness, health, and perfection. Let that truth wash over each one of us right now. Take a deep breath in. Let it go. Breathe it in. Let it go. One more deep breath in. On the next breath, we're going to exhale it with an ohm. So breathe in. Oh. And so let us remember that there is only one of us here. That one is the divine. And any prayer we speak for any one of us, we speak for all of us. And therefore, we are healed and so it is <laughs>